Looking around at what's taking place in politics today, it is so easy to get disheartened. Our political discourse, both the kind that we see on TV and the kind that we experience among each other, it did not used to be this bad. And it does not have to be this way. Politics can be a battle of ideas, not a battle of insults. It can be about solutions. It can be about making a difference. And so sometimes today we see a politics that is degrading, a politics that's going to the base, the basis of our emotions, of, of, of what disunifies us, not what unifies us. This isn't just the right or just the left. This is, this is happening all across our country. We are slipping into being a divisive country. We are speaking to each other in echo chambers where we only talk to those who agree with us and we think that there's something wrong with the people who don't agree with us. Yeah, but that's, this has been a growing problem for about 10 years, and now it's come to a head. That was Paul Ryan taking aim at the heated rhetoric that we've been seeing for years that has come to define the presidential primary so far, uh, including members of his party and the Democrats. Um, and I'm going to do this story, but I actually think the bigger story about divisiveness and, and destructive politics is the story about... Muslims and Ted Cruz and Donald Trump but, and but their the, opinions on this. Yes. The, there's one point to make about Paul Ryan, I think, or maybe others. I, look, I think Paul Ryan is a really serious, good guy who's yes, trying to do no, the right thing. Yes, I love thing. what he's, he's saying. To, right, exactly. It's just not new. Exactly. That's also true. But the point is that even Paul Ryan, in his job, and admittedly it's an election year, right. he hasn't been able to move his caucus forward. He, the House has done basically nothing. 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 And which is why, I mean, one of the m many reasons why people are looking at Donald Trump and Bernie Sanders and showing up at rallies. But this is the story I'm. I'm but he has spoken out. I just want to say he was speaking to interns who are, yeah. you know, 18 to 24 who may not be aware of how mm -hmm. old the story is. You know, they were, they were seven when it started. I think it's fine that he, ha he said what he said. And he's right. And he's spoken and out against that. Trump. I mean, I think he but, can only but, do what he can do, so he may not move this caucus, but he has been one of the Republicans who spoke out against the Muslim ban, who spoke out against the violence. So I think... I, and I give him full credit for that. I, it just made me... When I watched that speech, it just made me think to myself, that's great, but what about the House actually legislating something? I mean, I, I, I can't even... I, I feel like in the first month of Morning Joe, nine years ago, Joe said that, uh, about the people talking to the different corners and getting in their own echo chambers and it getting worse and worse and worse. And here we are. <laughs> I'm going to do this story. I still don't think this is the issue. I think this is stupid. Meanwhile, Ted Cruz and Donald Trump are butting heads over each other's wives. Trump has been incensed since anti-Trump super PAC called Make America Awesome blasted out a Facebook ad in Utah featuring a photo of his wife, a former model from 16 years ago. That picture's everywhere. It's a caption that says, meet Melissa. Melania Trump, your next first lady, or you could support Ted Cruz on Tuesday. Uh, we blurred the photo, obviously. Cruz has denied involvement, but you know super PACs work with candidates. You just know it. You just know there's some sort of like either a background connection or a direct one. Trump, there's a whole problem with that, which is why people like Trump and Bernie Sanders at this point, because they're sick of this. Trump has insisted the senator was behind it, tweeting on Tuesday, be careful, lying Ted, or I will spill the beans on your wife. On the trail yesterday, Heidi Cruz reacted. You probably know by now that most of the things that Donald Trump says have no basis in reality. So we are um, not worried in the least for focusing on our campaign. Are you going to uh, assert a standard uh, because of uh, the bringing in wives uh, of candidates uh, is so unseemly? Uh, I agree about with you. Oh, I agree with you. I mean, I did. I did. I wrote. I said, be careful because otherwise I'll be start. I'll have to start talking about. Uh, you know, your situation. Uh, now, do I like doing that? No. Should that have been done by him? And he knew absolutely about it. Then late last night, Trump retweeted a photo of Heidi Cruz and Melania Trump side by side with the caption, No need to spill the beans. The images are worth a thousand words. Cruz quickly, I can't even, I'm sorry, I'm trying to keep a straight face here. This is stupid. Cruz quickly responded, Donald, real men don't attack women. Your wife is lovely and Heidi is the love of my life. We've just wasted two minutes. I'm um, going to move on. It appears oh, wait, that we're, I mean, no, I mean, say, but isn't Cruz trying to have it both ways? I mean, by saying, who cares? Well, I think that this is part of, this is the undercurrent and you can, 
Gloss. This is the undercurrent of the Republican primary. And the Republican voters are, their emotions are being exploited. And this is another example of that. And this is too ugly to even talk about here. No, this actually, the reality the emotions are the being exploited by the politics of fear and Muslim bans and controlling Muslim neighborhoods. insults about I say one thing, which is the gap between the inbox this new president's going to inherit in terms of the domestic and international and challenges about. and this kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah. The gap between where the conversation is and what this job is going to be. If it got any bigger, it would hey be called guys, the Grand Canyon. Yeah. Hey, it's Twitter. It's a tweet. Scroll past it, okay? <laughs> if we talk about it, and Lou Dobbs does interviews about it, and everybody talks about it more, it becomes okay. bigger. We'll I think on. we've made Who the cares? point. We'll move on. Let's move on. Thank you. It appears... <laughs> I'm such a scroll past it. It's Twitter. <laughs> it's 130 characters or whatever it is. And 140. Stupid... Con oh, okay. Twitter's going to go down. I'm moving stock past it go because down today it's now. I just I doubt that. <laughs> It appears the Republican establishment is making preparations for a Trump nomination, with the Washington Post reporting that big donors will abandon the presidential race and focus on stemming losses in Congress if Trump is the nominee. Three new polls show Trump leading among national Republican primary voters. Ahead 12 points in the new Monmouth University poll, nine points in the Bloomberg Politics National Poll, and just three points in the Fox News poll. Trump has consistently led the GOP field nationally since short after entering the race. But he continues to pose a general election crisis for Republicans, losing to Hillary Clinton by double digits in two national polls released yesterday, down 18 points in the Bloomberg politics poll and 11 points in the Fox News poll. <laughs> Still, the Monmouth University poll finds a majority of Republican primary voters want the party to back Trump if he goes to the convention with the most delegates, but short of the number needed to nominate. 54% say to get behind Trump, 34% say nominate a different person. Mark Halperin, what is this telling us? That Donald Trump is very strong with Republicans and less strong with the general election electorate. And it's going to be incumbent upon Ted Cruz and John Kasich to make an argument besides that. They can't just say Trump's weak in the general election. That will not stop him. They need to make broader arguments. But this argument, when we vote in Wisconsin in less than two weeks and then in New York and other states next month, that's going to be part of the discussion. Does the party want to nominate someone who today looks like a weaker general election candidate? Trump argues as soon as he turns his attention to Hillary Clinton, he'll narrow the gap. But Republicans are, nominating some, are on the path now to nominate someone who is their weakest so, general election candidate today. Michael Steele, um, it doesn't seem like they have any alternatives. No, no they don't. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's okay. I don't know. Just wake up. It's, no, there's, who else? I mean, because if that person existed, they either would have run for the job or would be leading at this moment. And this is the harsh, cruel reality that the folks in this town, uh, where I am in Washington, just can't seem to get their head around. Yeah. The base of the party has indicated for the last nine months where they want to go. They're saying loudly and clearly, we got this. Not just in the polls, but at the ballot box. Yeah. And so all of these meetings, all of this uh, conundrum that's being stirred up uh, around stopping Trump and, and donors doing this and the political class doing that, all it's doing is agitating and alienating a base that the party's going to need behind whoever the nominee is come November.